hey guys welcome back to beat of the soul i hope you're all doing well i don't know about you but i'm feeling drained emotionally and mentally due to the killings of black men and women at the hands of police as well as the racism and the injustices black people face on a daily basis because this is a music platform i wanted to give my perspective from a music point of view if you look at the about section on this channel it explains how beat of the soul is a platform aiming to educate and entertain therefore i'm committed to creating content that educates you guys about different aspects of music and this includes talking about the injustices black people face in the music industry and putting you guys on to talented black people in the industry i also want to learn from you guys as well i don't know everything so please share your thoughts and knowledge in the comment section so we can educate and learn from each other. In my Blackout Tuesday post, I talked about how music would be nothing without black people and if we didn't create it, we influenced it. This wasn't just a blanket statement, it's actually facts. So here's a little music history for you. When slaves were forcibly taken from Africa, they brought their songs with them. White people may have been able to strip the identities of African slaves by giving them new names, but they could not take their songs from them. These African songs were adapted to reflect their experience as slaves and the songs evolved into genres such as the blues, gospel, jazz, rock and roll and hip hop. Most are songs I've never heard before. Many express a hope for redemption in the life beyond. Bending knees a aching, body racked with pain, I wish I was a child of God. I'd get home by and by. These songs were everything. He had to sing about his condition. Being sold, his family being separated, he had to sing to keep his plain metal bearing. He tells me that plantation owners often forced enslaved Africans to attend church to hear the message of Christianity, a message that missionaries carefully tailored to justify slavery. But the enslaved men and women took this new language and created their own spirituals, songs that often contain coded meanings, bringing messages of hope and sometimes visions of escape. Roll, Jordan, roll. Jordan was what? A river you had to cross. Okay, that could have been what? The Mississippi River, the Tennessee River, crossing into a better place. Old Satan was a slave master. Hell was being what sold further south. So in spite of the fact that the words were actually biblical, their meanings were very personal. personal. Dr. Norris explains that even though the words were from Christianity, these songs have their roots in Africa, where music was infused into every aspect of life. In the Americas, the enslaved Africans were forced to adapt. They weren't allowed to use instruments they brought with them. They took them from them. So what, they improvised with what? Hand clapping on the side of the heart. Improvised. I look at them and I marvel over how we got through all of this, but how we got through it all by what? Singing. Music was used to help free slaves. I think the first time I became aware of this was from watching a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air episode. So shout out to the cast, writers and crew for putting together such a great educational episode. Black history includes a lot of people whose names and faces aren't remembered today. Now, how many of you have heard the spiritual sung by the slaves? Uh, I have. <laughs> now listen to this. Follow the drinking gold. Follow the drinking gold. Follow the drinking gold. For the old man's waiting for to carry me to freedom. That song was written to be used as a secret code of the Underground Railroad. Now, these gospel songs were actually secret messages sent to tell the runaway slaves how to get to freedom. For example, the drinking gourd referred to the Big Dipper. When the slaves sang, follow the drinking gourd, that signaled to the runaway slaves to run towards the Big Dipper. Along the route, they would meet with the abolitionist and escape to freedom. Could you teach us one of the songs, Professor? Well, here's one called Wade in the Water. Now, this song told the runaway slaves that the best escape route was along the river. Now, late at night, these songs could be heard coming from the slave cabins along the route, guiding the runaways to freedom. 
Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Everybody join in now. Wait in the water. Come on now. Swing low, the literal words of swing low, were overlaid with a meaning that allowed them to derive great inspiration and hope for the future and hope for freedom in a way that was not detectable by the white slaveholders. For example, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I suppose the literal meaning would be the sort of the biblical meaning, swing low meaning come down from heaven, some sort of heavenly vehicle, and then coming for to carry me home would be to take me to heaven. And the coded message or the s secret meaning would refer to the Underground Railroad, which is not a railroad, of course, and it's not underground in a literal sense, but it's a loose connection of depots and, and individuals and places that helped shepherd and safeguard the slaves as they were making their way to freedom. For example, swing low, come down to the slaveholding states, sweet chariot, meaning the Underground Railroad, coming for to carry me home would be to come to take me to freedom in the north or into, into Canada. First verse is, I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Obviously there's a, there's a biblical reference there, but it also refers to the Mississippi River or the Ohio River. And what did I see? A band of angels, obviously that's literally a group of angels. It could also mean in the coded messages, the workers of the Underground Railroad. In an episode of the K-pop podcast, Ruby Sells, an African-American social justice activist, explained that during enslavement, it was a capital punishment for African-Americans to read. This meant that they could be put to death for reading. It was also against the law to write. The only thing they had left was culture, and out of that culture, songs were created. Songs became a way in which black people could express themselves in a society that tried to reduce them to property and said that they were not significant enough to speak. In the same episode of the K-pop podcast, Jonathan Capehart explains how music was the psychic fuel used to propel the civil rights movement and its demonstrators in their seemingly impossible quest for equality and justice. The Freedom Singers were originally formed in 1962 to raise money for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Their songs and music played an important role in the civil rights movement. Some of the songs they sang included We Shall Overcome in This Little Light of Mine. Betty Mae Fikes, known as the voice of Selma, was arrested for singing This Little Light of Mine. She adapted the song by including the name of the oppressors in the song. She explains that in jail, all they had was music. They would sing all day and all night. The jailers would tell them, if you don't shut up, we're going to rape you and take tar paper and put it all around the windows. Despite this, they kept on singing. James Weldon Johnson wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing. It was a poem about civil rights that was later set to music. This became the Black National Anthem when it was adopted by the NAACP, which stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People. Strange Fruit, sung by Billie Holiday, was an anti-lynching song. It was written in the mid-1930s by a Jewish school teacher in the Bronx, who was interested in civil rights and saw a photograph of the lynching. You may recognise the song as many artists have sampled and covered it. For example, Nina Simone covered it and Kanye West sampled Nina's version of the song on his song Blood on the Leaves. Amazing Grace spoke of forgiveness and redemption. A descendant of the KKK spoke about how the song was used to de-escalate the violence of police against him and other protesters. There's an old saying in the civil rights movement here in the United States that when in doubt, pray and sing. And that night, for some reason, we sang Amazing Grace, and we stepped up from the steps and began to slowly walk toward the police, and they parted because it made the white police uncomfortable because these were songs that they sang in their church. Mississippi Goddamn by Nina Simone was inspired by the deaths of four young black girls in the bombing of a church in Alabama and the murder of NAACP leader Medgar Evers. Sam Cooke, A Change Is Gonna Come, was also inspired by the struggles in the civil rights movement. He quietly gave the proceeds of the song to Martin Luther King. If you haven't watched Hitsfield, The Making of Motown, I recommend you watch it as it touches on the racism Motown artists face and the role they played in the civil rights movement. 
I'll put a link to my video on the documentary and the full documentary. As I explained before, genres such as the blues, gospel, jazz, rock and roll and hip hop were birthed from African slaves. Every genre that exists has been influenced by black artists somewhere down the line. All artists, producers, musicians, etc. have a responsibility to learn about the history of the genre or genres that they're in. Just as an artist will promote their work in interviews and on social media, I think it's really important for non-black people in the industry especially to state where their musical influences come from in interviews and on their social media. More time you will find that many of these influences are black or mixed with black. Artists, producers, musicians, etc. should also encourage their fans to listen to their influences because without them, they wouldn't exist. Elvis Hound Dog was originally sung by a black woman named Big Mama Thornton. Frank Sinatra often said that Billie Holiday was his greatest single musical influence. He also said that Ella Fitzgerald is the greatest of all contemporary jazz singers. Little Richard was a founding father of rock and roll. The Beatles covered many of his songs and he inspired the Rolling Stones. Collins Dictionary defines blue-eyed soul as soul music written and performed by white singers in a style derived from the blues. Examples of blue-eyed soul artists include Bobby Caldwell, Adele, Robin Thicke, Van Morrison, Joss Stone, Amy Winehouse, Tom Jones, The Doobie Brothers, Sam Smith, The Bee Gees, Christina Aguilera and so many more. I love these artists but I think the term blue-eyed soul can be problematic because it dismisses the black influences. When white artists sing black music they're propelled to a higher level because people become so shocked and amazed that they can sing like that but it's expected of black artists to have powerful soulful voices so as a result they have to work twice as hard just to be on the same level as white artists in their genre. Blue-eyed soul artists are also seen as more quote-unquote marketable because they're like what some people would say a black person in a white person's body so they become more quote-unquote palatable to audiences of all races whereas black artists are just not looked at in that way. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen to this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. I haven't even scratched the surface when it comes to the music that black people have influenced. So there are more videos to come and there are so many topics that I want to talk about when it comes to black people and the music industry. So stay tuned. I'm also going to create a playlist of songs from slavery and the civil rights movement and I'll put it on my channel. I ask that you take the time to listen to the lyrical content. Let me know if you want me to create a playlist that features blue eyed soul artists and their black influences or any other playlists from the music and artists that I've talked about. Check the description box for more information on how you can educate yourself about black issues, causes and black businesses you can support and donations you can make if you have the funds to do so.